Take me back to the first day you got traded to St. Louis. What were the thoughts going through your head? Nothing. I was uh, actually working out at the facility that I train at in the off season, and I missed a call from my agent. Um, called him back when I got done. He was like, hey, this is purely rumor. I just don't want you to not answer any phone calls today if they come in. And not 15 minutes later, I got a phone call from uh, a front office personnel at the Rays, and basically the gist of the conversation was, we're making a trade today and you're going to be a part of it. And five minutes after that, I was getting my phone blown up with congratulation texts, and I didn't even know who I'd gotten traded to because I hadn't even made it home from my workout facility yet. So it was a pretty uh, quick and painless process for me. What were the emotions like when you found out you were going to St. Louis? Uh, it was interesting because, um, you know, up until that point, I felt like, you know, that the Rays were kind of my home and the team that drafted me, so I had some sort of connection to them. Um, but, you know, it's always nice to be wanted and you're always wanted where you're going. So um, it was cool to come into a place where I felt like I was accepted right away and to be able to come into the big league clubhouse immediately and meet guys like Wayno and Jack and mm-hmm. Yachty and um, kind of get to gel with some of the longtime veterans in the clubhouse, it certainly made me feel a lot more at home. Who was the first person that reached out to you and kind of made you feel at home, like you said? What veteran? Uh, I think it was Jack. I went to uh, the Fan Fest um, (laughs) in St. Louis, and the night that we got back from our caravan, he texted me and invited me over to Dexter Fowler's house to go watch the, uh, I think it was a McGregor fight that night. Um, And he just hit me up on Instagram. I was like, no way. Jack's texting me like first day. I haven't even met him yet. Um, so that was, that was pretty special and definitely made me feel a lot more comfortable in my own skin. So in the short time that you've been a St. Louis Cardinal, have you kind of got the gist of what it means to be a St. Louis Cardinal and how much tradition is in this franchise? Absolutely. Um, you know, first spring we had Ozzy here also, but being able to be surrounded by the likes of guys like him, Willie, Cheo, um, just all the guys that come back and give to this organization. Um, you know, it's something that makes you want to go out and win a World Series for those guys and one day, you know, come and do that same thing and give back just because you see how much they care and what really goes into being a successful team and franchise. You were a bit, really big, uh, I would say, acquisition for St. Louis, and they have high expectations for you. How do you manage those and just stay humble and even kill? Um, i kind of been saying this a lot lately, but the saying of being where your feet are and being present in the moment. Um, You know, if I spend the whole time thinking about the expectations that I have to live up to, that takes away from my ability to actually live up to those expectations. So for me, it's looking in the mirror every day and trying to make sure that I'm a better version of myself when I go to bed than I was when I woke up. And if I can do that, you know, the only expectations I really have to live up to are my own. So um, at the end of the day, if I can put my head on the pillow and feel like I accomplished something that I set out to do that day, I'm, I'm happy with it. What are your goals for this season? What do you hope to accomplish this year? Um, I don't, I don't like to set, uh, like statistical goals or reach a certain level goals because in some fashion, those are all uncontrollables. For me, my goal is to get one day better every single day. And, you know, eventually one plus one plus one equals a whole lot. So, um, you know, if I can add a whole lot of one day betters up at the end of the year, I'm going to be in a much better position than I am now. And I like to view it as a continuous evolution. So if I can do that for the rest of my playing career, no matter how long it is, um, I think I'll be in a better position than I was when I started. How does being around a guy like Adam Wainwright make you a better pitcher? The experience, the wisdom. Um, You know, Ollie was talking to us in the clubhouse the other day, and he said there's two things you can learn from, experience and wisdom. And if you're only learning from experience, you're not doing it right because there's guys who have had the experiences and are willing to share them with you before you have to go out and have those own experiences yourself. Um, and so I think to be able to kind of shadow a guy like Wayno or a guy like Jack and see how they go about their business and not even the conversations, the way they carry themselves, the way they talk, the words that they use when they speak. Um, there's just a lot of things that you can pick up and implement in your own game. And I think that's been an invaluable part of my development since I've come here. Let's talk about your minor leagues last year. How would you rate your season? Um, I think last year is probably the most valuable year I've had so far yet in professional baseball. Um, it was the most failure I've ever faced, so I think a lot of people would categorize it as my worst season yet statistically, but hence the reason I don't set statistical goals, because if you look at the first half and you look at the second half, it's two different seasons essentially. Um, so for me, I, I learned a lot about myself as a pitcher and as a person in the first half facing that failure and giving up 14 home runs in my first 12 outings. I think I had two in my entire career prior to that. Um, and I figured out what I was made of, and I came back that second half, and instead of beating myself up for the first one, I decided to take something away from it and learn and grow, and I came out a different pitcher in that second half, and I think the results kind of speak for themselves. 
Did you do anything differently this past off season in terms of getting your body pro ready and being able to get to the majors? Um, I wouldn't say I did anything differently in terms of stuff I've never done before. Um, I got back to my roots this off season, which I think was uh, invaluable for me. And I, I started doing again, a lot of the things that had gotten me to the point that I was at uh, before that first half of the season last year. So it was a couple minor little adjustments in the season and then I had four months to kind of go home and really hone in those skills and perfect them. What does it mean to be a part of that young core, Nolan Gorman, Jordan Walker, you, Juan, that's going to be the face of St. Louis in years to come? I think it's exciting. Um, you know, you get in the clubhouse day one of spring training and they start talking about World Series and they start talking about how it starts now and, you know, I get the chills about that because that's what I play this game for. Um, I love to win. I love to compete. I love the mental battle that goes on between the pitcher and the hitter. Um, and, you know, I, I long to play for the team instead of myself. So, um, you know, being able to be a part of such a young, exciting, up and coming group that has a lot of talent and a lot of potential um, makes me really excited because I feel like we have a good opportunity to accomplish those things. OK, let's talk about something other than baseball. What makes you tick? What's your hobby <laughs> outside when you go home and leave the field? Uh, I picked up golf because I needed something away from the field. Yeah. Um, I'm a big thinker and I obsess. I'm a perfectionist. So um, I try and keep my, my hobbies relatively small because I like to pick a couple and master them mm -hmm. before I move on. Um, so right now it's pretty much just baseball and golf. And then I like to spend time with my friends and my girlfriend and family outside of that. How's your score in golf? Depends on the day. <laughs> <laughs> Since I've been here in this wind, not so good. but. Had a couple good days back home. Okay. Who's the best dressed on the team? Ooh. Depends. You can go with like the classic old school look. I'd say Wayne was a very uh, professional looking dresser. Or you could go with kind of the new school um, pop culture kind of look. And I'd say, you know, Harrison's probably got to be up at the top for that one. Who's the funniest on the team? Ooh. Miles, Miles has got some pretty good jokes. <laughs> He's always trying to put a smile on everybody's face. What about your tournament selection. Who's going to win the NCAA tournament? I tell you if I watched. <laughs> and just said the same thing. No big deal. Uh, who's the pitcher you idolized growing up who you wanted to be just like or master your game after? Um, there's a couple. Um, I'm kind of an old school fan of the game. Um, so I grew up watching, you know, Randy Johnson, Roger Clemens, mm -hmm. uh, Sandy Koufax. That's why I wore number 32 for such a long time. Mm -hmm. um, and then some of the new guys too, like Aroldis Chapman, Marcus Stroman, the the flair and enthusiasm that they have with the when they pitch and the, the presence that they create on the mound is something that I try and emulate. Um, as far as mechanically, I don't necessarily strive to be like anybody else because I'd like to be the most ideal version of myself. Mm -hmm. um, but I think there's little things here and there that you can pick up and implement into your own game and make them yours in your own unique way and they can be effective for you. So I've tried to do that with all those guys. Got you. What was the first thing you purchased with your big league contract? Uh, I got a car. Oh, with a big league contract? Like yeah. what will be? Yeah. Nothing. I got everything I want right now. I'm going to invest it. What did you do when you first got drafted? What did you do? What, what was your first gift to yourself? Bought a car and invested the rest. What kind of car did you get? Range Rover. Okay. My that one little splurge. <laughs> Last question I have for you. For St. Louis fans, for those who don't know about you, what type of player are you? What type of person are you? What can they expect for years to come? I'm going to take them out and compete. It doesn't matter if you cut off my left arm or tie it behind my back and I got to go out with my right arm. I'm going to find a way to win and get the job done. And, you know, like I said before, I love playing this game because I love winning and I love competing. So at the end of the day, if I can go out and give my team the best opportunity to win possible, uh, I'll be happy with the job I did.